Uh, so we wanted to give you guys a little update on a case that we had made mention of here. I think specifically I made yeah, mention of it in a monologue, in a monologue yeah. that I delivered. Um, but it has been, you know, cited by the president of the United States, has gotten a lot of national attention. In the wake of Roe versus Wade being overturned, a local newspaper reported on a 10-year-old girl in Ohio who had been raped. And because she was three days past that state's six-week abortion ban, she had to actually go to Indiana in order order to, uh, to get an abortion, to have someone who would provide an abortion. And it is still right now legal in Indiana, although that seems very set to, to change. So there were a lot of questions raised about this specific case. Um, there were, you know, people, especially on the right, uh, there was a lot of questioning of it on Fox News. Mm -hmm. Where's the, the corroboration? Where are the reports that are supposed to be filed? Well, now we have more confirmation that this story was the Horrible, horrible situation did, in fact, unfold. Let's go ahead and put this tear sheet up on the screen. So an arrest was made in the rape of that Ohio girl that led to Indiana abortion drawing international attention. Here's some of the details. Um, Gershon Fuentes, whose last known address was an apartment in uh, Columbus, Ohio, was arrested Tuesday after police say he confessed to raping this child on at least two occasions. He's since been charged with rape, a felony of first degree in Ohio. Columbus police were made aware of the girl's pregnancy through a referral by Franklin County Children's Services that was made by her mother in June. This is just, I mean, as if it's not already horrific enough. Um, the girl is barely 10. So when she was actually raped and impregnated, she was actually likely nine. Oh, I feel um, sick. Yeah, it's, sick. it's sickening. And I mean, I want to say, you know, listen, these instances uh, where you have young girls who get abortions because they have been raped. They're not extremely common, but they do happen. In 2020, there were 52 abortions in children 15 or younger in Ohio. Um, in 2019, there were 63. In 2018, there were 54. So this is the new reality. And actually, the landscape is set to get worse in in Ohio and in Indiana, in Ohio, they are planning a ban on nearly all abortions starting at fertilization. So then, you know, it wouldn't matter if she was six weeks in or 10 weeks or three weeks in, or it wouldn't matter. It would be illegal. And as I referenced before, Indiana is set to call a special session to impose their own bans. And um, the governor there, very cagey, you know, asked specifically about this case, very cagey about whether this would still be permitted in the state. Just be prepared because these are the types of horror stories that we're going to start seeing more and more. Yeah, it's a terrible situation. Something for everybody here. Uh, the other guy, the guy who committed this apparently was an illegal immigrant. So that's what a lot of people are talking about as well. I mean, it just, it highlights a lot. Crime and then the tragedy of a lot of these cases. And also, this is one where I just have to come back to, this is, you can, no matter what you believe, Politically, this is really unpopular. Like this, you know, like no yes. matter what side you're, you could be the most evangelical person on earth. You can't look at this and say that a lot of people aren't going to be outraged at situations like this. And we're only a couple of weeks in. Yeah. To you know, so this could stack up. And That's right. This is exactly what we were talking about politically, which is that it creates a hell of a lot of uncertainty whenever you have situations like this, which of course are rare, but they are going to pop up from time to time. I mean, we don't. You have to always plan for the worst case scenario because we literally know that it happens. And you know, I think it's it's very disingenuous for people to say uh, and not acknowledge that these cases aren't going to happen, and to yeah. try and turn this into a bigger thing. And I, I do think it will be a, a big political problem. And if you, again, it may not manifest itself today. It may not manifest itself in 2022 or maybe even 2024. But at a state level, at a national level, it will rewrite some of the conversation. And I think that's a problem if you end up on the other side, polit again, politically, purely through political classes. Well, it was interesting because yeah. the response, I think this is very revealing, the yeah. response from a lot of corners of the right wasn't to defend the law or defend this mm -hmm. horrific situation unfolding. It was to say this didn't really happen. Um, even though, let's say even, even if this story had turned out to be untrue or the girl had been older or whatever, let's say it had turned out to be untrue, even though it it did turn out to be true. The implications of the law are that this is going to happen. 
whether it was this instance or another instance, like I just said, roughly 50 to 60 times a year just in the state of Ohio, you have situations of children 15 or younger God, having that common. to seek it's not that abortions. Rare, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's horrific. It's yeah. absolutely horrific. And so the, the dodge and the cope was, oh, we don't believe that this really happened. We just want to cover our eyes and pretend that this isn't a real situation whether, rather than reckoning with the direct implications of the laws that they continue to try to implement. And now that we have uh, direct confirmation that it is true, the new COPE, this is from the Attorney General of Indiana, rather than focusing on the uh, horrific crime committed to this young girl, he wants to go after the doctor who actually performed the abortion in Indiana. Um, let's go ahead and take a listen to this. So what's going on, Todd? Jesse, thanks for having me on, but I shouldn't be here, right? I mean, first of all, uh, this is an illegal immigration issue because likely of Biden's lawlessness at the border and everything going on down there. That's why Indiana as a non-border state has actually filed several independent lawsuits on that. Then we have the rape and then we have this uh, abortion activist acting as a doctor with a history of failing to report. So we're gathering the information, we're gathering the evidence as we speak, and we're gonna fight this uh, to the end, uh, including looking at her licensure uh, if she failed to report. And in Indiana, it's a crime uh, for uh, to not report. To so he's upset about her not filing some government paper. That's what he's exercised about. I mean, it's just, you couldn't make it up. You couldn't mis yeah, make it up. Right. I mean, look, I do think the immigration point is fair. I mean, well, it's, I, it's that's like also not fair because be this guy has been here for like, longer well, than the I mean, Biden I, administration. I so it has nothing yeah. to do with the current border policy. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, sure. it's clearly it's a, a continuation. Dodge. It's still a continuation of something which is BS. And I do think it's crazy that, you know, people like this don't even get uh, deported until they commit like a horrific crime. But look, that's a conversation, I think, also for another day. And in general, I would look at this situation politically and I would say it's a nightmare. And while there is some there for the GOP to talk about immigration, like most people are gonna look at this objectively and be like, dude, you're going after the doctor? Like, look, this isn't even late term abortion, right? Like this is a 10 year old girl who was weeks. raped when she was nine years old. Yeah, yeah, also at six weeks. So the fact that it was an outright ban, I mean, that is a fact of what law is now in Ohio. And Ohio is also a swing state not that long ago. So is this gonna change the thing? No, I don't think so, but you know, Again, in the future, who knows how many more of these cases? If you said 50 or 60, 50 or 60 headlines in per year. Ohio. In the state Just of Ohio. In the state That's of Ohio. That's a lot. I mean, and I don't even know what the population of is Ohio, so I'm trying to think about what that would mean. So we're talking about what? At least thousands at the lower level, like across the country, every single year. So let's say half the country. You know, that's you're looking at several hundred of these cases per year where this could all be happening. And I think it's going to be a serious issue. So anyway, indeed, it's terrible. All right. all right. Update for you guys there. We'll have more for you later. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.